Hi everybody, welcome to the Deep Dive. Following my mini-series on checklists, did you know that there's actually an acronym for beginning a dive? Not your pre-dive safety check, the BWRAF, we've done that in the video up here. Actually, when you're on the surface, just kind of bobbing around with your buddy and you're ready to descend, there's actually an acronym for that, uh, that if I'm being generous, everybody silently goes through in their head to make sure that they're ticking all the boxes. But there are a few points that could actually help you out if you don't. And I know a lot of instructors that don't get around to actually teaching this acronym. So we're going to talk about SORTED. SORTED is a quick acronym to go through inside of your head or out loud if you really want to that can help you improve your diving. It comes from an older age of diving, a more analog age, but if you ever encounter equipment failure or something during the dive, it might help that you started the dive on the right foot. S stands for signal. You turn to your buddy and you give them the okay and then the thumbs down. But you also wait for them to signal back before you just disappear under the waves. Your buddy might be trying to sort something out on their equipment or not even looking at you at the moment or they couldn't even see your hand signal because you're wearing black gloves against a black wetsuit. So slow down, look at them and then hold their gaze and give them a nice clear signal. Too many divers just rush this and then they just disappear whenever they feel like it. But if you rush the initial descent, you're just starting the dive wrong. Your buddy may have noticed that you're not actually in the right place or that there's a problem with your equipment. So wait for your buddy to signal because there's no point in just descending down if they're not about to follow you or start the dive on the wrong foot. O is an important one for me and that's orientate. Have a look around at the horizon, where the sun is, your compass, so that you can mentally orientate yourself and know roughly which direction things are and which way you're facing at the moment. Dive briefs are great and all, but things can look and feel very different when you're actually down there under the water. So if you dive down and you know that you're going to turn left at this pinnacle, if you start facing the wrong direction, you might not even find that pinnacle that you're supposed to turn left at. Or worse, you find another different pinnacle and then turn left at that, then you're really going in the wrong area. Remember that you're still on the surface at this point. Just take a moment to consider the direction of the sun. Uh, you can often use that for very quick orientation whilst you're diving so that you know which direction you're facing when, you're, when you started the dive. If you know that the sun was directly behind you when you entered the water, then to get back to where you started from, then you just swim directly towards the sun. If you know the direction of the sun, it, it kind of naturally gives you that internal compass bearing. But if you dive with an actual compass, take a look at it on the surface so that you know the bearing that you started on. So getting back to that spot will be pretty easy, even if you do get turned around and confused. The compass can always point you back in the right direction regulator. Fairly important also. Uh, this mainly comes from surface swims. Uh, so you're supposed to use your snorkel to swim out to the dive site so that you're not wasting any gas swimming on the surface. But it also applies if you're diving multiple gases or just not diving with a snorkel as well. You basically want to make sure uh, or make it another check that you're diving the right gas and that is actually turned on. If you are swimming with a snorkel, just having that mouthpiece in your mouth can naturally tell your brain that you're ready to dive and well, you've got something in your mouth, so yeah, I can still breathe. But after that first meter you go under the water, you'll soon find out that you're still using your snorkel. So you want to make sure that you put your regulator in, not your snorkel. Swap over to your regulator, make sure that it's the right second stage if you're diving with multiple gases, and check your gauges again. Even after your buddy check, things can still happen to your tank valve. It's rare that you wouldn't notice, but things do happen. Someone could have rolled it by putting their hand on your shoulder to steady themselves, or boat crew could have tried to be helpful by checking your valves, but uh, actually closed it accidentally. It only takes a moment, just glance at your SPG, breathing from your correct regulator and just looking at that needle. T 
key is time. This comes from the age of diving before dive computers. Uh, if you had a diving watch, you'd rotate that bezel uh, to the minute hand so it would keep the elapsed dive time and you wouldn't have to do it in any complicated maths in your head to work out how long you've been under the water. If you still dive with an analog watch for backup, then set this up at that point so you know the beginning time of the dive. But if you're diving with a dive computer, then just take a moment to check that it's correctly set up and it's ready for that specific dive. I've been on dives in very cold water where I've checked my computer before the dive, everything was fine, but after jumping into the freezing water, the battery chilled down and actually gave a low battery warning. I've jumped in the water with my computer still set to apnea mode before uh, from some snorkeling I was doing earlier. Computers don't just automatically switch from apnea to dive mode. If anything, they lock you out for a day. So this is the moment to check your dive computer, make any changes before you descend, because by then it's too late. E is simple, it's elevate. Lift that inflator nice and high so that you can dump all of the gas out of your BCD. Air in the BCD always wants to go to the highest point. It, it won't go down. Uh, the, the water pressure isn't gonna squeeze it out. So you need to give it the best chance of escaping. So left shoulder up so that it can, the gas can't get caught over your right hand shoulder. So it goes to the highest point, lift up that inflator hose all the way up and then press that button to begin your descent. A lot of BCDs now have pull dumps over the shoulder. A small metal cable inside of the corrugated hose connects the inflator to the elbow joint on your left hand shoulder. So when you tug the inflator just downwards, a valve on your left shoulder opens. All of this is down to personal preference really, but if you elevate the inflator, that's a really good visual signal to your buddy and everybody around you exactly what you're doing. It's, it's rare that you lift it up to do anything other than dump gas. So I still like to elevate it, that way they know I'm about to descend. And D is descend. So do this slowly and at the same pace as your buddy. As soon as you fully submerge, stay upright just for a little bit with your fins downwards. That's gonna give you the most power to get back up to the surface should something happen. If your buddy or you have a problem equalizing uh, or with equipment, just a little flutter can just bring you back to the surface quickly. Equalize early and often. As a general rule, if you're equalizing properly, you can't over equalize. You're not gonna hurt yourself by equalizing too often and you shouldn't really feel anything. And then as you're going down, as you're equalizing, you're alongside with your buddy, just look over your buddy's equipment, looking for streams of bubbles. There are gonna be bubbles all over the place, but you're looking for a steady stream of bubbles from one particular place. If it is a tiny stream of tiny little bubbles, that's not uncommon and not too much to worry about. If it's coming from your regulator, you'll probably lose maybe one or two breaths worth of gas over the entire dive, but do check for leaks. If it does look serious, then obviously tell your buddy. And if it's a small leak, just keep an eye on it uh, so that they don't turn into something a bit more serious. If the bubbles do, become more frequent or larger, that's when you should start to sort of end the dive, get back up to the surface. But if it's just a teeny tiny little stream of bubbles, you should be fine. So most of that takes place in about 20 seconds or so, but taking those 20 seconds just to get yourself in the right mindset at the start of the dive can really help should something happen on the dive. Getting your kind of mental map up and running and orientated right at the beginning. Uh, another check of your gear just so that you are 100% sure that it's ready and set up for the dive and that your buddy is with you from the beginning. Just make sure that the dive is going to go right. Sorted. Uh, I've been doing it for years, but what do you do to start a dive? Obviously on a negative entry, things are a little bit faster and things often happen before you even touch the water, but you still go through the same motions, just making sure you're orientated, everyone's ready to go down and all that kind of stuff. But let us know what you do to initiate a dive in the comments. Don't forget to check out the Two Minute Beach Clean charity and simplyscuba.com. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving. Yeah.